we were testing Griffin here to see how he handled things because uh, apparently I don't know how to work technology, but you know, <laughs> it's not part of the functionality of fitness, I guess. No. I mean, I, I always know. say that like uh, it is a mental sport as well. So I think we handled the adversity well. I think uh, Griffin's hair was actually affecting things. Most likely. Have you always had the long hair, Griffin? No, three different times. Uh, once I did it, so I did it in college the first time and said we were going to do it until we won a national championship. So did that. And then I donated it after we won. Then I did you, it again. You won the national championship in college? Mm-hmm. Okay. Second and time. The second time I did it, I just grew it out because... I liked it for this, whatever. And then I donated it again. And then I grew it out when I, I started CrossFit. And then someone was like, you look like Thor. So then it just, that became a thing. It just stuck. So what, what do we have to yeah. do? Like what would have to happen for you to cut it again? You think? Have you ever thought about that? Like it's been, cause you, what, you, you've been CrossFitting since when? Like 2017, 16? Uh, two th- yeah, I started CrossFit in 2016. Um, yeah, so I started growing it out then, and then I don't know. I mean, I'll donate it again at some point. What did you, what did now, you donate it to you when you donated it? I think one time we did a Locks of Love the first time, and then they were like, don't do that because they sell it or something. I don't know if that's true. Um, <laughs> People get offended by anything. I, dude, I don't know. So I, yeah, I just, whatever. So I, I go to a, like, I get, I barely get my hair cut. Probably do it once every six months. Um, maybe <laughs> so sometimes I don't even do that. Um, but I've seen the same person since I was a kid. It's one of my best friends, mom. And she, uh, she runs, a, a hairdressing place. So cut hair. She it was a kid. It was called kids cuts at the beginning. Because her ki- she had kids, and they were young, and she cut kids' hair. Now it's like a family salon. So um, I only go see her, and she's the one that donates it for me. She deal- She just takes it and does whatever. So she's the hair dealer. So she takes like yeah, what do you, she's you the hair get? Dealer. Like you just get like an inch cut off there, right? Like dead ends. Yeah, I just get my dead ends cleaned up. I think rec- I mean recently I got like I don't know three inches, four inches off. Um, it was because most of that was dead ends anyway, and it's already at a length that it gets really tangled. So right here is fine. Anything longer, I need to get it cut. I mean, we're here now. So what do you do for that hair? Because like, it's, it's long hair, but it's also very, you have a very beautiful mane. It's um, genetic. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it's genetic. It's, I don't, I don't do shit. You're blessed. Yeah. It's my mom's hair. My mom has the same hair. It's really thin. It's just straight. I don't straighten my hair. It's just, what it is naturally blonde and good to go yeah i mean my hair changes through the seasons it'll get like people will be like oh you're strawberry blonde i'm like yep i am uh like it just depends if it's like super sunny your hair naturally gets bleached by the sun um and then my hair was really white as a kid i mean my beard gets really will get really really red um so just a mutt of vice Viking blood, Irish, and German. <laughs> I mean, I think the Viking blood is kind of working out for you, though. You know, I think there's going to be yeah. a lot of people that are just envious of the hair in general. Have you checked out the other Thors? Were you aware that there's other internet Thors? Of course. I mean, there's of Thor Bjornsson, of course. Like, he's the giant Thor. He's but, massive. Uh, the, the what, what is this? Uh, Loric Thor? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, there's a, you know, there's a few. There's, I mean, a few of them also have, like, their name is, like... Thor something, right? So um, I just credit my that dad as wanted... much as you guys that are just like Thors. Yeah, I mean, my dad legitimately tried to name me Thor, and my mom said, "Fuck no." She vetoed that one. <laughs> little did she know that yeah, it was going to be know. irrelevant. Yep, it was uh, going to happen one way or another. I mean, I would like to see you and the Lord Thor go head to head. That's something we should. It's... Look, I'm I'm down to do all the things at this point. He's a cat Thor. I'm gonna call it out right now. If I was six foot four, I would be. I'd try to be. Uh, 
uh, st- at least the stunt double for Chris Hemsworth. He's not six four. He's like six two, but still. I mean, they can alter anything on camera. I got a buddy that's uh, the Rock's stunt double, and you know he's got a rockish look, but you know from the backside in a frame, yeah. might be something we need to check in for you. Because you know, <laughs> well, the thing is, like me on camera. Compared to Chris Hemsworth, I'm way too big for like him. Yeah, he's just. I was tall. gonna say you're probably gonna outwide him by a good bit. Like yes. he's a big guy. Don't get me wrong, but he's not. You know, Griffin. Griffin but, but he, he's just tall, so yeah. <laughs> probably. Uh, so your parents were a big part of your athletic career, right? One hundred percent. We have something uh, very in common. My dad was a football coach. Yeah, and so we come from that that cloth <laughs> you know it's a different uh, expound, cloth people don't ex- know about expound on that a little bit so you were you were working out i think i saw where you started working out in fourth grade you legit like started learning how to actually work out in fourth grade yes um we had a weight room in our basement w- weight room you know we had a rack we had some dumbbells i started with a broomstick moved on to an eight pound barbell it's not an actual barbell. It was just like a bar that you would use like for Pilates. Um, my mom has been a master's Pilates instructor and for years, and she was a professional ballet dancer before that. Um, so she had all the things. So like our basement was just full of fitness stuff. One side of the basement was all the Pilates equipment that she, she taught classes out of. And then the other side was our weight room. But before that, I mean, my dad also did coach strength and conditioning for high schools too, on top of coaching football. So well, I was always there. So I was running hill sprints with the kids, sled pulls, sprints on the field. So like I was doing all of that all the time. I just started learning how to lift weights in fourth grade. So it was just a born way of life. Yeah. I mean, dude, I, but I was a blast, dude. You just I hope my dad will still have like some of his players call him up and be like, dude, how is your son this big now? It like seems like it was yesterday, you know? So yeah, it's crazy being a coach's kid. Cause you like, you grow up with the players like you, mm-hmm. you know, I, here's my story. My dad, I started working out, I guess like fifth or sixth grade. And uh, my dad was coaching at the school over here and uh, I go to him. I was just hitting like machines, you know, I was like going to my mom. I would get my mom to drop me off at a pool because it was the only place I could find that I work out equipment. I would just hit machines. And so I go in there and my dad, like, he's like, all right, well, you, you say you've been working out. Let's see what you got. And this dude puts 135 pound on a bench and just unracks it for me. And that thing just comes, boom. And my dad dad is like, I guess you haven't been lifting that much. And I swear to you, man, for the next year, oh, man, I came back like a year later. And I said, hey, put 225 on that thing. (laughs) I started repping it for a few because, man, that's just kind of how it was in my family. Like, how was the dynamic between, you know, was he your coach as well or just your just your dad? He, when I got to second grade, he started coaching me. Um, so he was from second grade until eighth grade through eighth grade. And then I have a four year, I have a brother that's four years younger than me. And he, he got offered to coach in high school at my high school. Um, we lost three games in a span of like seven years. Um, so they asked him, they're like, do you want to come coach? Um, and the, But he was like, I'm going to coach my other son and coached him up too. Um, and coached him until he was through eighth grade. Uh, so I got lucky to have him as a coach because like one, it made me a better per- like athlete. I didn't, I was given nothing. I had to earn everything, which is as it should be. I should not have been given anything. The, the hardest thing, the hardest problem was – um, I was always a born to be a running back. I just, that's what I was born to be. Um, and in middle school in sixth grade, we didn't have a quarterback and I ended up having to, I ended up being the starting quarterback for three years. Um, but, and again, as like a coach's son, like everyone's like, why the, why, why is he's the quarterback? Well, like, well, I worked harder and actually was better. I ended up just earning the spot. We had a bunch of people that want, I want to play quarterback. Like I didn't want to, I just did it for the team. Um, we also ran a, like the option. So we ran all versions of that. So basically I was a running back. I could throw the you're football. You're wildcatting it. Yeah. I mean, that's what we ended up running. And 
it was fine. But I played my entire life. I played free safety. I actually ended up playing corner in high school for a little bit. Um, uh, I mean, I played defensive end when I was younger, which was one of the most fun positions on the field. Um, but I ended up like always, I ended up playing and falling into my spot of playing running back and slot receiver as I got older. Um, so what was the dynamic not, like between you and, and your pops? What'd you say? What was the dynamic like between you and your pops, oh. like from the coach son, you know, parent relationship? He was a very good dad and also a very good coach, but he is not meant for everyone. We'll put it that way. Uh, <laughs> My dad's the same. Um, so, <laughs> it, you know, it, I like, I hate like to hate the kids today. Like there's no way they would manage. A lot of kids would not be able to manage having him as a coach. Um, like people were scared of him. Parents were scared of him, which was crazy, but it's just cause he, he cared enough to push and challenge people in the right way. He didn't coach everyone the same. He didn't coach me like he coached everybody else. I mean, he did coach me harder. Um, but you know, he knew under and understood like to get what's most out of an athlete, you have to understand what type of person they are and coach them through that. Not everyone can you just straight up scream, bear down, and get more out of them. I was that kid. I was too nice. I was too nice of a kid, and I played like that. I mean, there was one story that really changed, like, what I learned how to take, like, anger and turn it into something. And he <laughs> – there's a uh, – we were at practice. This was in, I don't know, third third grade maybe, something like that. Could have been fourth, but either way. Um, we're in the middle of practice and I'm just getting my ass kicked, being soft. That's all it was. And my dad called me out and was just like, go take your fucking shit off. If you're going to be this fucking soft, go sit with the fucking cheerleaders and blah, dude, like went in on me. And I remember, I remember this still. Oh, yeah. I started fucking crying, like enraged, just Oh my God. And, uh, so fucking mad. And the coaches were like, yo, Roger, like <laughs> you might want to, are you sure? And he literally looked at that, like looked at me. He's like, watch this. Made me sit out for two plays. I'm fucking fuming. Oh my fuming. God. Like tears running down my face. So <laughs> mad, ready to put holes in every wall. Um, and he's like, all right, if you're if, like, if you're done being fucking soft, go, go in and show like change that went in and, you couldn't. You could not stop me. It was impossible. I made five plays in a row, just playing. I, I was on. I don't remember if I was on playing D end or nose tackle at the time, but couldn't stop me. Immediate sack. Five plays in a row, and the coach was just. The other coach was like, "What the fuck?" And it was just like he's like, "Look, like I understand him as an athlete. He's too nice, and you have to push him past that limit, and he's going to learn how to use that." And like. Eventually, as you grow up, you learn like, okay, I can be that mad, but channel it correctly um, and make it intentional about what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. um, and it really changed like my perspective. I was just a super young age, but like, dude, people would, would lose their minds like at him if he was like that, that to people, or, cause, but he wasn't like that to every athlete. He was just a couple of us. Um, and, you know, I, pre I appreciated that. Not necessarily at the time, <laughs> but uh, right. that's also like, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's it just, For you know, me it, now, my dad's like one of my it, best friends. But at the time, like I had like some deep resentment towards him, you know. But now, like as an adult, with a, and for you too, with like having people I coach and stuff, like I see the lessons and I see why he did it, you know. Yeah. Yep. And, and uh, it, it, I mean, it changed. It just changed the way I worked at things. Um, he, like the first year I played football, he, he was coaching and like, we got in the truck and he was, he told me, he's like, you know, I don't think I, I'm going to coach. Like, I remember, I remember sitting in that Dodge Ram truck he had and we were sitting like in the parking lot right after practice. And he told me that, and I got like upset that he didn't want to coach. I sucked also my first year playing football. I was terrible. I just, I just, yeah. I was bad, but I told him, I was like, I'm not playing if you're not coaching because I respected him and what he has done and what he could do and what he's like able to do with other athletes. And it's the, I'm like that. He's like, that's the only reason he kept coaching. Well, thank God, because I wouldn't have been the athlete. I am. I wouldn't have had someone push me to be the best version of myself. Um, and I, like every athlete kind of needs someone to do that. I got lucky that it was someone like that truly walked the walk, talked the talk, right? Like it, and, and was close to me to be able to do that. Um, but that, 
dude, the, we had multiple years where we just didn't lose a game. We just beat the shit out of people. And we only had, um, I think the most we ever had on a team was 22. We normally had 18 people, so not enough to even run a like, scrimmage against each other every day. But that's because we didn't, there weren't enough tough enough kids to be on that team. Your dad wasn't going to have it. <laughs> no, right. Like, you're not, and he, we, dude, we had this one kid that like just, he d- didn't have it. He just didn't have it. But man, I have never seen a kid take an ass beating like that and get up every fucking play. Right, g- give me that un- 200% of the time. Dude, he might have, I mean, he, pl- my dad played him. He, like, obviously he didn't start because we would have lost, but he, like, he, he was out there <laughs> and, you know, he, <laughs> Couple like got five, six plays in a game or whatever, made sure he played because he he showed up and had the effort. No, he was not good. He was never gonna be, but like that's okay. I'd rather have that guy on my team. Hard. He was scout teaming hard. Yes, I would much rather have that kid on my team that shows up and does that work than some all star who's an asshole and doesn't put in the work. Like, dude, get out of here. I want a teammate. Do you that kid's name was Wayne? I don't remember his last name. Wayne, if you're watching this, you were a hell of a teammate. We appreciate you. Um, do you see like hints of your dad now, like in coaching your people with blacklisted or when you and the wild get together for training camp, can you see like yourself being him now? Uh, there's parts of it. Um, I don't think I have the balls to do a lot of the shit that he did. Yeah, me neither. I feel like they got away with a lot more shit than we did. <laughs> you know, yeah. now. Like a lot of stuff that my dad would like dropping the barbell on my chest would have probably been frowned upon in 2024, you know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so you yeah, bring that down a notch. Yeah. I've taken it down a notch. Like I've taken a lot of things he taught me and understood how to get the best out of each individual that I'm around. Right. Um, and that's probably the most important piece. Like obviously I coach, a 15 year old girl who's going to the games and I can't coach a girl that's 15 the same way that I was coached. Oh man. I Even if I was her one. dad, I couldn't do that. Man, that's a relationship, right? I've got a girl that I've taught since like coached since she was 16 and she still calls me coach. She's got her own program now and whole thing. And like, uh, that's a whole dynamic right there. Cause you know how coach coach sometimes becomes the, the shoulder to cry on with them. You know, or they want to talk about boy trouble, <laughs> like that dynamic next to like some older male games level athlete is completely different. So it is, it is, yeah, yeah, it is definitely a relationship that you have to work your way around everything. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's it obviously like that's really helped me in understanding how to adjust and how to coach someone differently. Um, so. I, I really am appreciative of that. And then obviously, like, not just out, out of coaching, but just being the, an athlete, being the right athlete around other people. Um, people get better when you have someone to raise the standards. You have to have someone decide to take that on upon themselves and, and raise those standards. Um, so, and I, it's different. Like, I'm a different athlete now at 32 than I was at 24. Um, and, it, like, most of it's just out of having so many more responsibilities. But years ago, all I wanted to do was just be the best athlete I could be. Could be a teammate at the same time, but it's the best athlete I could be or best football player. And now it's it's shifting as the coaching is taking over more and more as being the best leader I can be. Um, you know, like everyone wants to be a captain on a team, but like it, this is different. This is like leading – a community, not necessarily a team. You're leading a community, and it's a little bit different. Like, it's starting to again. It's hitting me more and more as I get more into this in, into coaching. Um, you, someone's got to keep raising the right culture. Um, and you know, I really like re- really appreciate right now, like what Deion Sanders is doing over at Colorado. Like, the, he's rebuilding an entire culture. Completely, and it's right really now. cool to watch. Right. So you're just trying to put your thumbprint on things. So you. You were a football player. You tried to go pro. Like, you got pretty close. Mm -hmm. How was that experience? And how did that kind of, like, how did that experience of going from a 
potential NFL football player to probably going through a season like I did was like, I don't know what to do with myself. Like I've been training for Mm -hmm. 15 years or whatever it was, you know, and now I have nothing to do, so to speak, as far as goals, ambitions in the athletic field. So, and then coming into functional fitness, like how was that whole experience and process for you? It was uh, def- it was the hardest time of my life for sure, definitely the hardest. Um, and I'm different from it um, because I always believed since I could re- before I could like do tell anyone what do you want to be? I want to play in the NFL. That's what it was. Mm-hmm. I did everything and anything I could to be the best football player, and the thing is, I was. Um, unfortunately business is business in this world. And that's a hard lesson to learn. It's, it's some stuff is out of your control. I don't, it doesn't matter how good you are. And people wouldn't be like, well, you could have like, if I had been playing at UGA or Alabama, then it would have happened. You're it's probably right. Problem is timing didn't work out. I was really small. I didn't grow till I was my <laughs> a senior, but I was the number one receiver in the state of Georgia, my senior year, but that's not how recruiting works. A lot of it's luck and timing. Um, and then I went and, you know, played in college and I was our number one receiver. I started as a true freshman. Uh, the second, like I already was looking at potentially, you know, being an all American, a fresh, like I was an all American, an academic all American, but it broke my collarbone. Then the next year, same, like it was really good, but our offense wasn't that great. And then like, I didn't up. it just, there's a bunch of random things. I tore my hamstring, which ended up, I believe was what cost me going to the NFL and there's just so many things to it and training for so long, always thinking you're going to do this one thing. And like whether some people are like religious and believe in God and believe in like what's supposed to happen in your life is meant to happen. And I, I do believe like, look, things are supposed to work out the way they are. It just it is what it is. I don't know if it if it's changing or like I don't I have no idea. Like I'm never going to know that answer. But for me, I believed it. I thought, and I was so confident it was going to happen. I had all the signs. I had all the reassurance from NFL scouts and coaches that that was going to happen, and it didn't. And it's a, it's a identity, like it's identity theft. Like your identity is, you feel your identity is gone. Who am I? Like, but I do know who I was, like am, and it's, I'm an, like an athlete that is going to be the best at what I, at everything that I can be the best at. Like I'm not that uh, that's not going to change. I'm not going to turn into like just sit and wallow and like be upset and not do anything about it. Like you, you like that. I'm not going to do that. But I, and that was the hardest thing. It's like I got to figure out what I'm going to do. And so you you wandered into functional fitness. I got lucky that my uncle, uh, he was already doing it at the time. He finished 32nd in the world when they were taking 30 athletes in the Masters. I think he was 48 at the time. Gotcha. So you had a like precedent, 20, the 20, family 50. precedent. This whole family. Yeah. Thing. And he, yeah, well, he and he was just, yeah, right. And, uh, and he, well, he was just like, hey, I think you'd be good at this. And I was just like, I don't know. CrossFit's pretty stupid. Uh, so, it's an honest assessment. I was like, that's dumb. I mean, I'm I not doing that. I was the games thing, and this is dumb. And then I remember seeing Rich Froning take his shirt off. I mean, like, well, <laughs> you know, like, I think I want to do that. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, I think – so I had a big crossroads. I went out to watch the games in 2015. Didn't know much about it. Um, flew out – I'm from California. My uncle is there, and he flew – like had me flown out, and we went and watched the games. And, um, you know, I go there, and I'm like, damn. Like I, I, Annie Thor's daughter was there at the time. And I and like Cara and I, Cara Webb and I was like these fuckers are fit. Damn, like hell yeah! I thought that was the coolest thing. Obviously, the dudes cool like at the same time, but to see females be able to do the same shit, I was like, all right, like, I want to. I like I like this. And then I saw the they had like a sandbag event where they took the sandbag through the stadium and the tennis stadium and yeah, took it across in wheelbarrows or whatever. I saw that and I was like, I want to fucking do this. 
this is so cool. Like, I want to do this event. I have to be in this stadium. Unfortunately, I didn't get the, to do the that. The one where the because they were like up it. in the stands and they had to throw it onto the field and climb yeah, down we, the wheelbarrow. It was strategy. It was athleticism. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was fitness. That. Like, you had to do all the things in one. Yeah. And I was like, this is super cool. I also had two phone calls from two different coaches I had in my life that were coaching at colleges at the time. And they asked me to go coach for them. Um, cause every, every coach I've ever had told me I'd be one of the best coaches. They just, I, I would. And I, I didn't want to hear that. I, like, I wanted to be that. I wanted to make millions of dollars on Sundays Same. and like, which you can make millions of dollars coaching, but like, that's not where my heart was at the time. And I still had so much left to give as an athlete. Um, I mean, my story is another story to look at me, Griffin. I became an announcer. So, you know, like, <laughs> you know. Again. But, I mean, you're still, like, it's still good. You're up around it and a part of the things well, that you like. Well, the problem is I, I had to sit away and, like, I, I didn't watch football for years. I stopped watching altogether. I could. I just was so pissed. Every time I watched a play, I'd be like, dude, this guy sucks. Like, I'm way better than he he is. Like, And I was like, I can't look at life like that. Like, I can't, I can't sit here and be a – complaining bitch about shit um so it just took me some time to get over it dude and i love what dude sundays are my favorite days now i just watching well football i think when... this sport kind of helped you find some peace though right yeah for sure it really showed me that like i'm not just one dynamic i'm able to flip and go into another sport and become a professional at it and be one of the best in the world at it it wasn't just one thing um I was so much better at football than I am at CrossFit. Um, quickly. So 2016, yeah. you start CrossFit. 2018, you go to the games on team. Yeah, 2018, we went. 2017, we really had a good chance. Um, we had a girl tear ACL, which kept us from qualifying. Um, we were in second place all weekend. That happened. Shit does happen. Injuries happen. Um, and then... Everybody retired after 2018, which is the whole story about that. And like the adversity we had to go through just to get the right team and get a team put together to make, and then making the games. Um, we had, I don't want to say we didn't have any business being there because we did. Um, but dude, I was two years into CrossFit, you know, like we didn't have, we didn't have everything that we needed, but we had a lot of, a lot of grit and a, we put a lot of work into things. Um, and then I went on the whole individual tour after that. And I, my first one was in Dubai. I qualified for Dubai when they made it a sanctioned event and like that. right after the games, um, which I always told myself I would love to go do that event. Cause that was like one of the ones that everybody went to super cool event. And I was like, man, I want to go. I said that at the beginning of the year, then they made it a sanctioned event. And I was like, I'm not going to fucking qualify. Everyone's going to try to go there. This is going to be impossible. And I qualified in the last spot. I had to beat – to buy, And I've heard you talk about this. You were shy. You yeah. were alone, correct? Yes. Because you coach yourself. Yep. So you fly shy and alone, new to the sport of CrossFit, overseas. How was that, how was that as just like – because look, like we're talking now, and I don't see the shyness anymore, right? So obviously no, – like, it, CrossFit itself – has changed my way of how I communicate and talk with people. Um, it's gotten rid of that. I still have shy moments, dude. Like I'm not the most, I, like I'm not the guy at the party that's always trying to do talk to everybody. I'm just in my own lane, but I also enjoy talking to people. I enjoy hearing their stories and, you know, the given, like the give and take of, of how conversations can go and make, making connections now. But I wasn't like that. Um, and out there, like, Dude, that was the time of Fraser, like running everything, and it like the the old school CrossFit guys. It was very football locker room. Don't fucking bother me. Don't say shit to me. I'll fuck you up. Type stuff, um, which was I mean, the fine. I was used to it. That was cool. Used to, yeah. um, but I also realized I was like that. In this sport is different, and you sh can't be like that if you're going to make connections or friends with these athletes because I was doing this by myself and I was trying to find people to train with and, and all, all of that. And it's funny that was Jeff Adler's first individual comp as well. 
Um, Caroline was out there with him, though, too. So he had her out there. Plus, they had some other Canadians um, out there. They're close, as a they're team. close group. Yeah, so he had a group of people, but um, we ended up hanging out a good bit. Um, and then also Haley Murillo and Tyler Tsunian, who's out in California. Um, but I didn't get to, like, I didn't talk to a lot of people. I think the only person that was really big in CrossFit that talked to me, it was Fre- uh, Frederick Aegidis, um, which guy. was kind of interesting. And he's, uh, yeah, he's he came and talked guy. to me. Just, before, like, we fin- I think he finished, like, 21st. I finished 22nd at the end of the weekend. Something like that. And but it was like kind of cool because he'd been, you know, been at the games. He's been around like for him to like stop and talk and give me some like, you know, some notes or some things to like help out the rookie, like not knowing what he's doing. Um, and then uh, Dane Smith was also there, too. Um, and That's I got cool. to talk to him a little bit. And, like it was there's some nice guys and taught me some like, you know, it's OK to like be more conversational out there with some people, but I hung out mainly with Jeff and those other two, Haley and Tyler, at, if I hung out with anybody at all. Um, but yeah, I went out there and then I flew home. It was a really, it's a really long flight. Um, I learned a really valuable lesson of uh, winning events because I lost the snatch event, which no one thought I was like, no one knew who I was, but I also went out there like I am better than all of you at this. And it was just, there was a whole lesson to learn about that. And I had actually went up to Matt Fraser after the event, because he PR'd to beat me, I had made a big mistake. I jumped twenty pounds, but I didn't know kilos. I didn't know you had to know un- announce the kilos. I like then they're yelling thirty seconds on the clock, and I was like, I don't even see a clock. I don't know how much time it's I have. A, it's a and huge I'm just learning weight lesson, on there. dude. A huge, huge learning lesson. Have like, no idea. Well, it's antiquated, and I, there's people that have been like competing for a couple of years, and they're still doing like scaled events. You know what I'm saying? This, right. You've been right. competing a couple of years, and you're in Dubai trying to figure out this whole dude. thing. The, yeah, dude. I, but I was so mad because I like I snatched like two ninety eight, and then I jumped to three eighteen. <laughs> but I and the thing is though, I launched it over my head. I didn't miss it forward. Everyone in that stadium was like, "What the fuck? Wait, who is this guy?" Yeah, the like I just I was just, I just over pulled it well over my head, which because then everyone was like, "Dude, this guy can snatch three hundred and forty pounds. <laughs> like this is ridiculous." Um, and Fraser, like I knew the number was going to be like, I needed 305 to 308, but I didn't know, I didn't know, and I didn't know the whole key. I didn't know the kilo situation. I, that's my own fault. I was, you know, he hit um, 308, right? 302, 302, 303, something like that. And then there was a bunch of guys at like 300 or 301. So I finished fourth in the event when I should have won it. And I went up to Matt after the event and I was like, good job. But also like, I will never let you beat me in a lifting event ever again it's not gonna happen and his response was like (laughs) well his response was like i mean you know i well i also i also added like if i had been i i remember i prefaced like if i had been in the final heat like i wouldn't have let you beat me and he goes well then next time be in the final heat and you won't have that problem and i was like fair enough that's That's a fair enough response 2020 fast forward games 490 pound front squat. Yeah. I on it. Honestly, I put that on there just for him. (laughs) (laughs) We are holding two year grudges and I love it, dude. I, dude, I was never going to let that go. There was no way I was getting my event win. I was getting my check. Like, I don't care if you win every other thing. What was second place? 440. Uh, it was like 450. Yeah, it was Tyler Christoffel. <laughs> yeah, so you just were leave, leaving no, there was no like, doubt, leaving no doubt whatsoever. No doubt. And the thing is, though, before even before that event, I mean, dude, the his ratio when we did friendly Fran, he did it in like 318. I did it in 342. I finished third on that event. I was super proud of that. But like for him to go that much faster, the entire field was unbelievable. But I was sitting in second place. On day at uh, the middle of day one, and I was like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> uh, this what is, is that cool. here right now? Yeah, because uh, Fraser that, went. That is when your name really started to permeate across yeah. everything. I that wish it had been in the stadium. For you. Yeah, no, yeah, it's, it's, it was the COVID year, but how how was that moment for you? Like finally to like come from the football situation go through that bout of let's just call it depression or whatever, you know, finding yourself, realizing what am I going to do now? 
And then here you are toppling people, you know, in a games level setting. Um, what, what, how was that moment for you? Um, it was just re- like good reassurance. It, like that, like all, all of that work is really like going where, where it needed to be. I was in this sport. I've learned like, it's so different. You don't, again, you don't win. You don't win every day. You don't get to win every event. Like you lose a lot. And that, and, and I mean, depending on how you look at it, but first place is first place. And you're used to either win or losing like in sports, you win or you lose. Granted, you can change the perspective. I can win or I can learn. Um, but at the end of the day in your record board, it's win or loss. That's what goes up there. So like you take it that way anyway. Um, and I realized like before I was like, damn, this is really hard to like, I might not make it, but like my, whenever I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. I had a lot of people not believe me in a lot of things in my life, just like a, a lot of others. But like, I really use that as like that anger that we talked about earlier. I use that to really push myself to prove people wrong. Um, and to prove myself right as I got older. And this is one of those things was proving myself right. Not, not necessarily proving everybody else wrong. Um, and when you, when you talk I, about I, that I just, anger and aggression, where do you think that that comes from? Because I've heard you mention that a couple of times. Do you think it's from people doubting you in the past? Or like what, yeah, what comes so, to mind when you think about those? Because I always talk to my athletes about you're going to have emotion. Nervousness is an emotion. You just have to use your emotion. Same thing I do with the microphone. I have nervousness. I just use that emotion to my, to my benefit, right? So what are you thinking about going into that situation? Like what is that drive? Um honestly like most people wouldn't believe it i wish i had i had pictures i do have pictures somewhere i legitimately was the smallest kid i was always the smallest kid in everywhere and like i didn't dude i don't give a i don't care about fucking bullying try and bully me i'll beat the shit out of you i didn't care how small i was fuck you right like that's fine and obviously like on teams you it's give and take so it's not a big deal um but man like I was legitimately the smallest kid. I was also one of the strongest kids, but nobody respected it because I weighed, I was, you know, 50 pounds soaking wet, like just always. And living your life small and both literally and figuratively when being looked at um, really changes your perspective of how people like, how you interact and you're around others and how what they t- say to you like affects you and that really became like oh you are gonna fucking talk shit i'm going to beat you i'm gonna be better than you i don't fucking care what i have to do you're not willing to go that distance and i am and then people started thinking like it went from oh griffin's this small kid uh, and strong to this motherfucker's insane like he's legitimately crazy. And I'm like, no, I'm just willing to do what's necessary. Like I don't care. Like I care that well, I care that much here, about I'm myself. Take it there. Yeah. There's yes, always. There's no one that was going to outdo the work. It just wasn't gonna happen. Um and, and then it yeah, like most of that drove me to take that anger of people not believing in me, not people not supporting me. And I had a support, I'm, my, my family, my parents believed in me. Like I, that's, that's all I really needed. Like I, and, but it cultured that in myself to where like, I didn't need anybody to believe in me. I just needed myself. Um, granted it is helpful to have a team of people to believe in you. Um, it, it's much, much better, but like you hear those stories, like not, I, I'm, I was never going to be Michael Jordan, but Michael Jordan got the same shit. Wasn't going to be good enough. Didn't make his team. Like, you know, like that makes you work so much harder for some people, the people that really want it. Others will just shut them down and they quit. Right. Um, But you have to have have some type of adversity. I actually have Michael Jordan's Laney high school Jersey for that point. I bought the high school Jersey as a reminder to me that even the great ones are down. And I look at that jersey all the time just for that reason. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, – I don't know. It's – about. I mean that was – like he was an like a role model to me too growing up. I mean I looked at a lot of guys and I like that were role models as athletes. Like uh, one of my favorite players of all time is Barry Sanders. 
small guy. Yeah. Not the fastest guy either, but one of the quickest, shiftiest, could fucking do anything and would just knock you the fuck out too with the football. Like he didn't care. And like, it's just, I looked at other people that were just different. Do you got it like being different? And they were exceptions to a lot of things. And it made me believe I could be that as well. Like, you know, it really helped with that confidence of being different and being able to, you know, like prove the others wrong. Dude, Barry, people didn't think Barry Sanders was going to be that great. And he ended up being unbelievable. No, one of the greatest, especially if he had played longer. Like it, it was, the box was this big and he still the top. Yeah. Good luck. And time. I yeah. modeled how I ran a football after him. Um, I would love to see that. Well, so, I mean, we didn't want like um, that for grid. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, even uh, even in middle school, people like so we were like my high school was uh, the Trojans and I wore number five because Reggie Bush was my favorite college player of all time. Jeez. And I watched highlights between him and Barry San- and Barry Sanders all the time and mimicked how they moved. And people I, literally after every game, I would have co- kids come up in this line where you're shaking hands and be like, yo, it's the white Reggie Bush legitimately. When I play be, like it's, it's manifesting it. I. You there's I have plays where I had almost identical plays that he did at USC, just watching how he moved, how he changed direction, how he saw the field like it. You know, but those were guys were were different and it, it was it was cool to like model things after them. And it, I don't know, like that's another way I found I found people to look up to instead of just listening to those people, you know, telling me you can't do shit like good at this age like you can tell me whatever you want i'll be like i don't give a fuck but yeah, um, a great segue so 2023 you come into the grid and you're immediately rookie of the year and i think um maybe just your stature and stuff people immediately think strong guy but one of the best utility players you plug in anywhere i think the big moment for me was the muscle ups when you went unbroken i think people <laughs> were just like you know what i'm talking about like yeah. how is this guy doing that like what was your 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 thought coming into the 2023 grid season on how you were going to put your thumbprint on grid as a whole and your team the wild um i mean it's the same you know i bring my same mentality like i'm here to win i think we had a call uh our very first team call again i'm just a new guy so i know my place um but they we went around said like whatever about us and all it said was i was like Hey, I'm Griffin and I'm here. Like, I'm just here to help us win. That's it. That was it. I was like, I'm just here to help us win in any way, shape or form. That's what I'm here to do. And, you know, like ultimately that's what I, that's part of what a team is. You do your role to help you guys win. Yeah. You can make friends and things through that, but I was just there to do that. And then this year is different, but um, obviously I'm, I've been on the team and I, I can be more of a role model and a leader, but um, my first year, I was really just like, I'm here to do, be the best I can be. Like, that's it. Like, whatever's asked of me, I'm going to do it. If I'm the best at it, if I'm not, I'm not going to do it. I'm cool. Whatever you need, I'm that guy. Um, so like the butterfly ring muscle ups, Dan all year told me, he's like, you're not learning ring mu- butterfly ring muscle ups. I'm not allowing you to do that because I'm not allowing your CrossFit career for you to go down because you tore your pec. And I was like, Dan, you know, when you tell me I can't do something, I'm going to do it. And he's like, I'm not telling you can't. I'm saying don't. I was like, that's not any better. Um, you already said can't, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like yeah. And now. I listened. So no, I don't think many people would have known that. So you were dealing with an injury also when that, that moment happened. Yeah. And uh, well, he... I waited till the end of the CrossFit season and I practiced them once. And, and then, I mean, I just hopped up there, taught myself how to do them. And here we go. We have a bunch of injuries in that, la- in that, uh, in that match previously. And I was like, Dan, I'll do it. And he was like, are you kidding me? I'm like, I'm, oh, let's do it. I'll go unbroken. And he was like, are you fucking serious? I'm like, yep. Went out there and did him unbroken. <laughs> like, oh, what just happened? Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, I I also wasn't going to tell him I couldn't. I was going to do that if I couldn't do it. So, 
Um, you know, I just it, it's the the sport's fun. Uh, I don't really get to do a lot of the, like. Yeah, I'm the strong guy, like, but I'm I am the utility player. I'm CrossFit. Like, I wish the bars were heavier. <laughs> um, I won't say what I did in training on the some of the ladders, but when we had our camp this year. <laughs> Uh, I went faster than I think Dan thought was possible. Um, so, <laughs> you know, like they could so be, they could be heavy for the 2024 season. Yeah. You have a lot of your friends on the team too, right? Like people you already train with daily, uh, Pat, Amanda, um, you know, we're branching into United grid league. Now you guys are that first expansion team, the Atlanta wild. What, what kind of like, changes that you can you see in locality and how that's going to affect you guys or, or better the sport and uh, like what do you think the the landscape of grid like looks like going for the future i think it's a good step forward in making this a bigger sport and slowly growing it correctly um we still obviously have we have a we have a lot of blacklisted athletes here um, that, that are on our grid team that are on Atlanta wild. Um, and it makes it a little bit better, especially obviously having Dan around too, but we still train together less than all the other teams out of Florida, because most of them are a little bit more centralized and it's easier for them to go and train together. Um, I still haven't seen some of my teammates this year yet. Cause they weren't able to make it out to our camp. Um, cause we still have people across the country, right? So like if we had some other teams eventually pop up out West, some of our players may be on that team and that'd be great. Like, and then they don't have to travel as far, um, at least except for competitions, but just to be able to keep building the sport on, like, on a team level, um, it just would be, it would be, we need one, we need more money and then we can get more people in town to train more often. Um, but I think it's a big step in the right direction expanding it into an, another state um, and trying to get it back to be completely national. Um, but there, we don't have as, as much training together as you would think as a whole, except for like, yeah, Pat and Amanda and I, and then we've got a few others in the area, but um, it's not like we're hosting a bunch of training sessions for grid specific stuff. We do a lot of like, Hey, send in your videos and we'll put it together. Um, and then when they can make it up, we might, you know, we'll train, do CrossFit stuff and our blacklisted training together. And then we'll, we may do a grid piece here or there just to check to make sure. Um, but uh, for most people, they're wrapping up their CrossFit season. So now they should be a little bit more available. Um, just being generally yeah, prepared I mean, that ultimately for Ultimately, that's kind of what it looks like. Yeah, we're expanding to two new teams next year. So I think that goal is to just kind of make you guys more localized. Also, this year, big thing, we're going to be at Mr. Olympia. Um, mm -hmm. so going to be on that big stage, um, you know, what do you have as the expectation for yourself for 2024, 2023 rookie of the year? I mean, obviously MVP of the league would be something to shoot for, for like, but individually, like, what do you want to see? And, and are you taking more of a leadership role with the wild this year? Now that you've got a year under your belt? Yeah, I think I earned more of respect. I've always been an athlete of lead by example first. Um, what not always being vocal, um, this year I'm more vocal, um, because I earned that right to be, um, but out of myself, like I expect to just be my, my, like to be the best leader I can be to take this team to go win the championship. I think that we have all of the pieces that we need to do that. Um, and we'll obviously find out through our first match, but we have, we have more of the pieces than we had last year. We were lacking on a lot of spots, but we had some extremely bright sides, and a lot, all those bright sides are back. Um, so we've closed some of those gaps, and I really would like to help take them to go win a competition or win the championship only because Dan told me the years previous, the Wild have always been really close, and they just couldn't get it done. So this should be the year that we change that. Um. And I will do my best to make sure that happens. And again, I will be that guy. If I need to do some things that I'm not used to doing, then I will find a way to do them so we can move on and keep trying to get wins. Um, but yeah, this year's a little bit more, it's a little more different. Um, we got a bunch of new faces, so a little bit bigger leadership role, making sure 
you know, everyone's doing their job, doing the right thing, paying attention, um, and willing to do what's necessary as well for the team and not being selfish. This is a team sport. So if you're the best at it, but you don't want to do it, you need to do it. If you're, if you think you're the best, but you're not, you let somebody step in. We're here to win. You guys got to step up. So it is a team sport, but individually, is there anybody else out there in the landscape of grid that you think gives you competition in a one-on-one setting? Depends what it is. Mm. If it's moving a bar, no. Heavy bar. Obviously, Taylor, like Taylor Stallings. I don't. I'm. I'm thinking men to, like male to male. There's not. Um, but da- Taylor can move a fucking bar. She's, so, she's got some cycle speed. It's, <laughs> she's got some cycle speed. <laughs> um, I don't have the range of motion that she does. Um, I can't. I I can't hang with some of the cycling that she can do. Some of the stuff I can. I I, I can. Some of it I can't, and I never will. No matter to overhead, what I do. overhead stuff, because I've heard you. Yeah, talk dude, about I'd have to stuff. shave my arms a foot. I'd cut a whole <laughs> arm of like my arm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude, I just—it's not happening, man. I had a six-three wingspan. I was meant to play football, yeah. um, but you put like, for instance, ladders. There is there is not a single person that I know of in grid, out of grid. I don't care. That's beating me in those ladders. Send Klokov. He's not going to go faster. We, we might have to find some people to challenge you this year on, on some side bet stuff. So we'll Yeah, see dude, that's do. fine. That is fine with me, man. Bet on over under how long it's going to take me to do one of the ladders. Um, I mean, last year, like, I would had caught people. I, they'd be two bars ahead of me, and I'd beat oh, them. Oh, just crushing it. Just so, crushing so, like, it, sir. you know, it's – that's that like so there's specific things right there's a bunch of stuff different in grids so there's people that definitely can hang um Aaron Medina last year was trying to hang on one of the ringer points with the handstand walk clean and jerk um and he did a pretty good job but I was really pushing the pace so he misses he misses jerk but which is not gained good him, gained him a little bit they uh, yeah well he yeah and he missed it unfortunately that means we uh we blanked him um were you surprised ringer. though by some of the skill set of people once you actually got into grid to see you know some of that? I was surprised spread, other skill sets. I was surprised um, from years previous because I had been doing a bunch of the trials online to make money for me to travel to go do cr- CrossFit competitions. <laughs> also, funny how things work grid. out. <laughs> well, on, grid helped me pay to go to Norway, which well, which I won the event to go to the games. Right, like so. I I mean, I played it right, but. Um, you know, I was doing those trials and RJ always loves to remind me I can't beat him on uh Grid Kong. Granted, I tried it once and then did it one more time again the next year because I knew I would get money for it. Um, but I can't beat him on it. I mean, if I practice RJ, you'll lose. Um, but yeah, I was winning RJ. so many of the events, even the gymnastics ones. Um and taking money, and then once the next year came around, I didn't do the trials, didn't pay attention to them, and we had a ton of new signings. And I was like, "Wow!" Like, there's, I was happily surprised at how much the sport grew in a season. Well, and I've done the trial. I did the trials for two years, so from the beginning until then, I was like, "Wow, hell yeah!" We've got more talent. It's more competitive. It's then it's more fun to watch. It's more fun to race against. Um, and I would, I'm expecting the same thing this year. I'm expecting a big jump up with talent um, and people getting faster. And just, you know, like around the league, seeing videos, people are faster than they were. They're taking, they're, they're learning to not be egotistical and going, damn, they're doing it a certain way and it's faster. I got to learn that, right? Mm-hmm. Instead of being like, oh, I'm, I'm better. I'm going to stick to my, no. if their way is faster and you, under, you see why it is, learn it. Maybe it's not faster for you, but at least find out. You know, and I've seen a lot more people start doing that, and you're increasing the sport. That's what great athletes do. Like, you don't have to necessarily copy people, but look at what they're doing and understand why they're doing it. It might be a better way. Um, and I think a lot of that's happened. So it's it's pretty cool to see that, and uh, I, I'm really excited to see how much the sport, how much more competitive it gets. I'm expecting people to give me some races on a lot of things this year. I really do. We are definitely about to find out Griffin. Uh, You are one person that is helping us increase and grow this sport. And we just want to thank you for your time. And uh, you know, we're looking for an exciting uh, 2024 for you in the Atlanta wild as you guys expand the new United grid league. Yeah. It's going to be, it's going to be a good time. 
Taylor, hopefully there's not a whole bunch of barbell hang cycling because I will lose unless there's burpees. Then I got your ass. Okay, Taylor. We might have to have a little. We might have, to have a little Griffin, uh, Griffin Taylor side challenge burpees and a barbell. There's got it. I will lose unless we got a we got a sprint to the bar or there's some other di- there's some other movement added. It's the only time I like the trials I could beat her is if it was like deadlift burpee or so, it's so remember, something Taylor, you gotta have Griffin something. said you run slow. Griffin said you run slow, Taylor. Just remember that all season long on those sprints at the end. Taylor's, Taylor's going to come out said, busting a 4-4 four, four on her 40. <laughs> yeah, she's going to be – because that one's hungry too. Uh, oh, well, hell we'll yeah. See Griffin and everybody else in the 2024 season. Griffin, man, thank you for your time, man. Of course. I appreciate it. Do you have to stop recording or –